the microphone to uh, Adam Abdelboulan. Thank you, SRG uh, Swan. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, I would like to begin by giving you an overview of where Somalia is on the humanitarian front and the impact of the work we do uh, together with our partners. Somalia began this year with a number of similar challenges that afflicted it in 2020. These are the so-called triple shock of uh, climate change, um, recurring floods and droughts, a desert locust uh, outbreak, and of course, the COVID-19 pandemic. On climate change, when Cyclone Gachi struck in November, 120,000 people were affected in Puntland. People lost their homes and livelihoods, all of which had a knock-on effect on their health and well-being. We provided help to some 78,000 of them through nutrition supplies and food assistance. The desert locust infestation has uh, lived up to its biblical uh, connotations. This sort of plague has affected almost 700,000 people and close to 300,000 hectares of land across Somalia. We have so far provided support to about uh, 25,900 farming households and sprayed more than 110,000 hectares of land with uh, biopesticides. On the COVID-19 response, Somalia has a fragile health system which is still developing. We were able to buttress the government's health machinery with testing laboratories, special, specialized isolation centers, training of more than 5,000 frontline health workers, and the distribution of thousands of PPE sets. All of these steps have also had a longer term impact. They have helped build and reinforce the health system, both improving the health of uh, Somalis and helping train health ministry and medical personnel for the longer term. Education was another hard hit system that was already fragile to begin with. In October alone, the UN uh, responded by reaching out to at least 93,785 children of whom 44,911 were girls with education in emergency assistance, bringing the total number of children reached to uh, 538,676, of whom 201,492 were girls. These are just some of the examples of where we have been able to make a small difference. But this is not about uh, patting ourselves on the, on the back or resting on any uh, laurels. The factors that went into the triple shock have not gone away. In fact, they will exacerbate humanitarian needs uh, this year. With our partners, we will need to step up um, uh, these efforts uh, in reaching the most vulnerable people affected. On the economic front, the triple shock has disrupted the trajectory of Somalia towards economic recovery. For example, reflecting uh, gender uh, inequalities in the country, women-owned businesses have been especially hard hit, with 98% reporting reduced income. But there are signs of hope. Somalia continues to make a steady progress under the heavily indebted poor countries or HIPIC initiative. Somalia's debt stood at uh, 5.3 billion at the end of 2018. This debt will be reduced to 557 million if Somalia achieves the completion point expected in 2023. A very welcome guiding document for the, UN's, uh, for the UN families overall support for Somalia this year and beyond is the UN Sustainable Development Cooperation Framework uh, that we signed in October uh, last year. 
This is the UN's multi-year strategic plan to guide our collective contribution to the re realization of the Agenda uh, 2030 of sustainable development uh, in Somalia. This framework is built around four strategic priorities which mirror the pillars of Somalia's National Development Plan uh, 9, uh, NDP 9. Um, and those pillars are one, inclusive politics and reconciliation, two, security and rule of law, three, economic development, and four, social development. The UN rem remains uh, steadfast in providing support to Somalia in 2021 to achieve a stable, peaceful, and prosperous society. I look forward to any questions you may have. Thank you very much, uh, Adam. Our next question goes back to Nick Perry of Agence France Press. Uh, Nick, back to you. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, just one more, if I could, for Mr. Swan. Um, if, the, if the indirect presidential election does not occur by February 7, as, as expected, um, and does that mean, could you just explain what that means in terms of President Formaggio's mandate? Uh, if it expires, does that mean he continues to hold office until an election occurs? And, and does Yun Som see this creating a credibility issue or, or risk of insecurity in Somalia? Thank you. In uh, October, uh, the Parliament adopted a resolution that uh, even at the expiry of uh, the mandates, both for Parliament and uh, for the President, that the incumbents would remain um, in place until successors are elected. Um, this uh, would perhaps be uh, subject to some discussion by legal scholars, but there appears to be a strong uh, legal basis for um, continuity in office. Larry, to uh, manage the questions. Uh, good morning, folks. A quick reminder, please raise your virtual hands if you have any questions to ask us. Raise your virtual hands so we know which order to ask the questions. Our first question goes to Evelyn Kahunga of Al Jazeera. Evelyn, over to you. Uh, good morning. Um, my question is to the SRSG, and it's about the election, which... Uh, meant to happen on the 8th or by the 8th. Are you confident that the players um, or that Somalia can hold a credible election? Um, and we've been hearing about a lot of armed clan sort of movement around their candidates of their choice, uh, threats by political players to hold parallel sort of elections if our major and his government doesn't hold one. Are you confident that we will see a peaceful election on the 8th? First of all, there's been great effort uh, by uh, the UN system, but also by many international partners uh, to engage the full array of key Somali political leaders uh, in recent months. Um, I have recently traveled to a number of the federal member states for uh, direct uh, conversations with their leaders. Uh, we've had bilateral meetings with senior uh, Somali officials, including the president, the prime minister, ministers, uh, key opposition figures. Uh, in addition to those bilateral contacts, we have met collectively as international partners with many of them, um, also uh, visited federal member states uh, with AU, EU, and EGAD. So there has been a serious effort to engage all the players, encourage them to seek common ground, encourage them to pursue dialogue and compromise, encourage them to be imaginative in finding ways to overcome uh, obstacles uh, to proceeding with implementation of the electoral process. Uh, I believe there are uh, many uh, Somali political leaders of goodwill who are uh, actively exploring ways that they could uh, reach agreement on proceeding with implementation. Uh, as I noted, the international partners have been vocal in their eagerness for an agreement on the way forward, not a parallel process, not alternative means of advancing. Um, in this regard, I do want to emphasize, I think the what is eagerly desired is agreement on the way forward prior to uh, February 8th. Um, I think it's uh, evident that because of the multi-stage uh, uh, 
system for organizing Somali elections in which uh, there must be uh, initially elections, uh, electoral processes uh, to select the Senate, and an electoral process to select uh, delegates who in turn elect members of parliament, and then both the Senate and the lower house, the House of the People, are to come together uh, to choose the president. Uh, it seems very likely this will extend for some additional period of time. What's important, we think, is to have an agreement on the way forward so that everyone can be confident in what the process entails. Um, and uh, that's very much what we're encouraging. Fundamentally, it will be up to Somali leaders to, to make those determinations, uh, but we very much hope they'll continue to pursue dialogue, pursue compromise, uh, and seek to find a solution. Uh, that will also be the best way to reduce the risk of, of violence or disruption uh, by those who may feel uh, disadvantaged or left out of the process. Our next question goes to Ruben Kiyama of A Voice of America. Ruben, over to you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, my, first question, my question goes to the special representative. Sir, in your, in your bilateral meeting with the Somalia leaders, did you discuss the tensions between Kenya and Somalia? And what is your message to the leadership of the two East African nations? We uh, have certainly share uh, views that have been expressed uh, by others uh, in the region, including uh, senior leaders from the African Union, that uh, de-escalation and restraint uh, would be desirable uh, along the, the border between uh, Somalia and Kenya. Uh, international partners have, in fact, uh, communicated uh, over the past year on several occasions, urging restraint, urging de-escalation um, in ghetto, along the border, and uh, in regard to potential regional aspects of, of, uh, of differences in that area. Uh, we have obviously seen the reports of recent incidents. We are, of course, alarmed at the uh, news of civilians who have been killed or injured uh, in these incidents. I would note that uh, in December, uh, there were concerns raised uh, by the Somali authorities. These were then taken up at the uh, Heads of State and Government Summit of the Intergovernmental Authority on Development. That summit meeting charged uh, President Ismail Omar Gele of Djibouti with organizing a fact-finding mission to uh, examine those concerns and to return with uh, both details and an assessment of what had happened and also recommendations for the way forward. So we look forward to uh, hearing from uh, EGAD on these issues. Uh, it is being addressed by um, a, a sub-regional organization, in this case EGAD, uh, and we believe that's a helpful way uh, to try to understand the details of what occurred and also hear a recommendation from this organization on how to proceed. Uh, folks, our next question comes from Nick Perry of Agence France Press. Nick, over to you. Uh, hi there. Um, I have a question for Special Representative Swan as well. Um, you mentioned that uh, it's expected that the election process could extend for a considerable period of time, I think was, was your quote, because of the complexity of the electoral system in Somalia. Is it fair to say then, sir, that you do not expect there to be a, a vote before February 8? Um, and, and if not, could you give us some idea of, of, of a timeline for when you would think that we could see an inclusive, incredible vote recognised by the Member States? Thank you. As I explained, this is a multi-stage uh, process in which it, it starts uh, at a uh, at the with the election of uh, upper house uh, seats as well as lower house or house of the people seats. Uh, but this is a somewhat complicated uh, endeavor. Uh, no elections have yet been scheduled at those levels. 
Uh, and even once they are completed, additional time would be required to seat the members, uh, swear in everyone uh, for the House of the People and the upper house. I do not know exactly how long that will take. Um, and only after that would the second stage of the process, that is the indirect election of the president by the upper house and lower house meeting in, gen in joint session. Uh, my point really is that what is most important is not ensuring that the electoral process is fully completed by February 8th, um, which seems unrealistic at this time, but rather to ensure that there is a common understanding by uh, key Somali leaders about how this process is going to unfold uh, and uh, how it will proceed uh, until it reaches uh, its conclusion. And that's where international partners have spoken very clearly with one voice on the importance of an agreement that includes uh, the key stakeholders that is based on the September 17 model signed by the president and the five federal member state leaders uh, so, that, um, so that this process can go forward. I think that's what we're placing greatest emphasis on at the moment, reaching agreement on how the process will advance uh, so that any uncertainty can be minimized. Uh, folks, our next question goes to Cara Anna of AP. Cara, over to you. Hi, good morning. Thank you for this. Uh, again, from Mr. Swan. Uh, will the UN recognize the results of an election in which all regional states don't take part? And what kind of punishment might follow a vote that goes ahead as incomplete? Thanks. The, again, the, I think the partners have been quite clear that uh, they believe that it is important that there be an agreement on the way forward. And as the statement issued on January 12th uh, noted, uh, this is important to proceed with a credible uh, electoral process. Um, I think we would have to see what develops uh, in terms of the specifics of this going forward. Uh, we uh, continue to urge uh, all possible efforts and indeed redoubled uh, initiatives uh, and creative thinking uh, to ensure that there is an agreement uh, that everyone can subscribe to uh, that would uh, allow for the elections to proceed uh, with a, a collective uh, commitment uh, to the rules of the game and uh, to the outcome that will emerge from that. Uh, but uh, we're not at a place right now uh, where international partners have taken a stance in terms of what would be the, the specific response uh, to different scenarios. But we are uh, actively urging, encouraging, and supporting uh, the parties to reach an agreement uh, so that uh, all can participate in the electoral process. What I think you are asking is about the status of discussions between um, Hargeisa and Mogadishu. Uh, I would note only that, uh, of course, uh, the uh, Musa uh, Bihi uh, and uh, Mohammed Abdullahi Mohammed Farmajo uh, met uh, in Djibouti uh, last June, um, hosted by President Ismail Omar Gelen, um, and with support from other regional leaders and some key international partners. Um, we welcomed uh, that meeting, uh, as did many, many other uh, international actors. Uh, there was a subsequent program of discussions uh, planned as an outcome of that. Uh, however, for a variety of reasons, uh, that program of discussion uh, does, does not appear to be continuing at this point. Uh, we would continue to uh, support uh, discussions and dialogue uh, between uh, those entities so that uh, some agreements can be reached on, uh, on the way forward for them. We think this is a, a, a useful uh, initiative and that, uh, it's, uh, that continued communication uh, would be very helpful. Uh, so uh, I think uh, that is the status uh, at this point. Uh, you obviously could ask the Somali uh, land authorities or uh, the Mogadishu, uh, the government of Somalia, uh, for its views on uh, the next steps. Uh, but our understanding is those discussions are, are on hold at the moment, 
uh, but we would certainly welcome uh, continued communication uh, to uh, find a way forward. Uh, folks, our next question goes back to Nick Perry of Agence France Press. Uh, Nick, back to you. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, just one more, if I could, for Mr. Swan. Um, if, the pre if the indirect presidential election does not occur by February 7, as, as expected, um, and does that mean, could you just explain what that means in terms of President Formaggio's mandate? Uh, if it expires, does that mean he continues to hold office until an election occurs? And, and does Yun Som see this creating a credibility issue or, or risk of insecurity in Somalia? Thank you. In uh, October, uh, Parliament adopted a resolution that uh, even at the expiry of uh, the mandates, both for Parliament and uh, for the President, that the incumbents would remain um, in place until the successors are elected. Um, this uh, would perhaps be uh, subject to some discussion by legal scholars, but there appears to be a strong uh, legal basis for uh, continuity in office. Uh, I think the concern is more what the political reaction may be. Uh, and I can tell you that uh, in discussions really with a, a very wide range of, of, of actors here uh, within uh, government circles, uh, federal member states, both those more critical of the central government and those more tightly allied with the central government, with uh, political uh, candidates, uh, presidential candidates, uh, and others, civil society, I think there is concern uh, that going beyond February 8th without a clear agreement uh, takes us into um, unpredictable territory and that it would be far preferable to have an agreement prior to the 8th of February so that everyone is on the same page, has the same vision, viewpoint, agreement on the rules of the game uh, as this process uh, continues. Uh, so our assessment is the concern is less a, a legal concern, uh, but more one of uh, avoiding an unpredictable political situation um, in a in a country where we certainly don't need any more of that. Uh, folks, our next question goes to Ali Hussain Sahal of Horn Connect. Ali, over to you. Ali? Ali, we might come back to you. In that case, we'll skip over now to... Uh, Hello. Oh. Hello, do you hear me? You. Yeah, yeah. There we go. Uh, um, I would like to ask Ambassador James Swan, uh, in case uh, every option uh, fails in the current uh, process to Somalia's election, and uh, uh, the disagreement between parties stand, what could be uh, what could be you, uh, the UN in Somalia's? Uh, what what will UN in Somalia do? Uh, uh, what clear actions will they take? Uh, if there are any, uh, can the, the ambassador explain? Uh, we are focused at the moment, along with uh, other partners, on making every effort to support. A Somali initiative uh, to resolve the current uh, political impasse. Uh, I have been in very frequent consultation with uh, federal member state leaders, um, and I am encouraged that uh, several of them uh, are working hard uh, to look for solutions. Um, these are their initiatives. These are their ideas. These are their solutions. But what we are trying to do is encourage that, uh, we're trying to uh, uh, offer suggestions. Uh, we're uh, offering, obviously, support should uh, good ideas emerge that can be embraced uh, by all of the key Somali political stakeholders. Uh, we have also continued to maintain uh, very frequent contact uh, with the senior levels of the federal government uh, to continue to urge also uh, efforts, initiatives uh, to 
overcome these continued uh, impasses in moving ahead with the electoral process. So we really are seeking to give every opportunity and encourage every opportunity by the Somali leadership uh, to uh, overcome these differences um, and uh, take action really in the coming few days uh, so that uh, answers can be found, solutions can be found uh, well before the 8th of February. Um, that's our emphasis right now. Uh, we're very eager uh, that this continue to be what it has been, a Somali-led process. Uh, this is a sovereign country. This is a, a set of Somali initiatives. The September 17 agreement represented a Somali political consensus on how to move forward. Uh, we're very confident that they, uh, within the Somali political leadership, are, are, should be able to do this. And that's very much what we're encouraging at this time. Uh, folks, our next question goes back to uh, Kara Anna of AP. Kara, over to you. Hi, thank you again. Uh, what are the leaders who refuse to participate in the election telling you? I mean, what exactly do they want to see before taking part in it? Thanks. There are uh, three specific baskets of issues uh, that uh, are in the process of being discussed. Uh, one involves the selection of the committee that is to choose the seats from, uh, or the, the seats for the communities uh, from Somaliland who would be represented in the national parliament. The second is a set of issues around uh, the appointment of the election management bodies uh, and some uh, accusations that certain appointees um, do not meet the appropriate criteria for inclusion in those election management bodies. And there's a third set of issues around the conduct of the electoral process in Garbahare, in ghetto region of Jubaland. There are many uh, informal discussions that have gone on over a number of months and are continuing over how to resolve these three baskets of issues. Um, and from our consultations with a wide array of actors, uh, we believe that in fact solutions on these three issues remain uh, within grasp and indeed are quite close uh, if it would be possible for the key actors to come together and reach a final decision on these topics. So th those remain the, the, the specific uh, issues that are under discussion uh, and that have continued to hold up uh, forward movement. Um, I think more broadly, uh, sadly, uh, there is a, a current climate of mistrust among many of Somalia's top political leaders and the challenge to some degree is how to overcome that mistrust at this time, allow everyone to move forward together, address these specific issues that have solutions, um, and be able to move forward uh, collectively on an agreed plan uh, to get to uh, the completion of the electoral process uh, based on rules uh, that everyone supports. Oh.